Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an important topic to discuss. The functions of the kidney, types of kidney disease, and everything you need to know about kidney health. So, let's dive right in. The kidneys, vital organs in our body, plays several crucial roles. First and foremost, it helps filter waste products, excess water, and toxins from our blood, producing urine as a result. The kidneys also regulate electrolyte levels, maintain blood pressure, and produce hormones that stimulate red blood cell production. The kidneys are located on either side of the spine, just below the rib cage. They serve several important functions in the human body. 1. Filtration and Excretion one of the primary functions of the kidneys is to filter waste products, toxins, and excess substances from the bloodstream. They receive around 20% of the blood pumped by the heart and filter it to produce urine. The urine then flows through the ureters to the bladder for storage and eventual elimination. 2. Regulation of fluid and electrolyte balance the kidneys help maintain the balance of fluids, electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, calcium, and phosphate, and acid-base levels in the body. They adjust the amount of water and electrolytes reabsorbed or excreted in the urine to maintain optimal balance. 3. Acid-base balance The kidneys play a crucial role. In regulating the body's acid-base balance, maintaining a slightly alkaline pH, they control the excretion of hydrogen ions and reabsorption of bicarbonate ions to help stabilize blood pH levels. 4. Blood Pressure Regulation The kidneys produce and release a hormone called renin, which plays a role in regulating blood pressure. Renin helps control blood volume and vasoconstriction, narrowing of blood vessels, thereby influencing blood pressure levels. 5. Red blood cell production The kidneys produce a hormone called erythropoietin, which stimulates the bone marrow to produce red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body, and erythropoietin helps ensure an adequate supply of oxygen-carrying cells. 6. Vitamin D Activation The kidneys convert an inactive form of vitamin D, obtained from the skin and diet, into its active form. Active vitamin D is essential for the absorption of calcium and phosphorus in the intestines, promoting bone health. 7. Detoxification The kidneys help eliminate various waste products, including medications, metabolites, and environmental toxins from the body. They play a crucial role in the detoxification process. Overall, the kidneys perform vital functions related to filtration, excretion, fluid balance, electrolyte balance, acid-base balance, blood pressure regulation, red blood cell production, vitamin D activation, and detoxification. Maintaining kidney health is crucial for overall well-being. And any impairment in kidney function can have significant consequences for the body. Kidney disease Kidney disease, also known as renal disease or nephropathy, refers to any condition that affects the proper functioning of the kidneys. The kidneys are vital organs responsible for filtering waste products, excess fluid, and toxins from the blood, as well as maintaining electrolyte balance and producing hormones that regulate blood pressure and red blood cell production. There are several types of kidney disease, including 1. Chronic Kidney Disease CKD. This is a long-term condition where the kidneys gradually lose their function over time. Common causes of CKD include diabetes, high blood pressure, glomerulonephritis inflammation of the kidneys, filtering units, and polycystic kidney disease. CKD progresses in stages, with the final stage being end-stage renal disease ESRD, 
where the kidneys fail completely and require dialysis or kidney transplantation. 2. Acute Kidney Injury AKI AKI is a sudden and severe loss of kidney function, usually occurring over a short period. It can result from various factors such as dehydration, kidney infections, certain medications, reduced blood flow to the kidneys, or direct kidney damage. Prompt medical intervention is crucial to prevent permanent kidney damage. 3. Glomerulonephritis This refers to inflammation of the glomeruli, the tiny blood vessels in the kidneys responsible for filtering waste and excess fluid. Glomerulonephritis can be acute or chronic and may occur due to infections, autoimmune disorders, or other underlying diseases. 4. Polycystic Kidney Disease PKD PKD is an inherited disorder characterized by the formation of multiple fluid-filled cysts in the kidneys. Over time, these cysts can enlarge, leading to kidney enlargement, reduced kidney function, and the potential development of kidney failure. 5. Kidney Stones Kidney stones are hard deposits that form in the kidneys. When certain substances in the urine crystallize, they can cause severe pain and discomfort and may obstruct the urinary tract, affecting kidney function. 6. Urinary Tract Infections UTIs UTIs are infections that occur in the urinary tract, including the kidneys. If left untreated, UTIs can spread to the kidneys and cause kidney infections pyelonephritis, which can potentially damage kidney function. It's important to note that these are just a few examples of kidney diseases, and there are other conditions that can affect the kidneys as well. If you suspect you may have kidney disease or are experiencing any kidney-related symptoms, it is advisable to consult a healthcare professional for an accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment. Kidney failure. In addition to kidney disease, in the medical world it is also known as kidney failure. Kidney failure, also known as end-stage renal disease ESRD, is the final stage of chronic kidney disease CKD where the kidneys have lost their ability to function adequately. In kidney failure, the kidneys are unable to filter waste products and excess fluids from the blood effectively, leading to the accumulation of toxins and imbalances in the body. There are two main types of kidney failure. 1. Acute kidney failure Acute renal failure Acute kidney failure occurs suddenly, often as a result of a severe injury, infection, medication toxicity, or reduced blood flow to the kidneys. This type of kidney failure is usually reversible if the underlying cause is treated promptly. The kidneys may regain their normal function within a few weeks to several months with appropriate medical intervention. However, if left untreated, acute kidney failure can progress to chronic kidney disease. 2. Chronic kidney failure Chronic renal failure Chronic kidney failure develops over a period of time, usually months to years, as a result of irreversible damage to the kidneys. It is typically caused by conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, glomerulonephritis, or polycystic kidney disease. In chronic kidney failure, the kidneys gradually lose their ability to function, leading to a progressive decline in kidney function over time. Once chronic kidney failure reaches its end stage, the kidneys are unable to support the body's needs and renal replacement therapy, such as dialysis or kidney transplantation, becomes necessary for survival. Chronic kidney failure is further classified into five stages, based on the estimated glomerular filtration rate EGFR, which measures how well the kidneys are filtering waste from the blood. The stages are as follows. Stage 1 kidney damage with normal or mildly reduced kidney function. 
EGF are 90 milliliters per minute. Stage 2 Mildly reduced kidney function EGF are 60 to 89 milliliters per minute. Stage 3 Moderately reduced kidney function EGF are 30 to 59 milliliters per minute. Further divided into stage 3 EGF are 45 to 59 milliliters per minute and stage 3B. EGF are 30 to 40 for milliliters per minute. Stage 4 Severely reduced kidney function EGF are 15 to 29 milliliters per minute. Stage 5 Kidney failure or end stage renal disease. EGF are 15 milliliters per minute or dialysis dependent. In end stage renal disease stage 5, the kidneys are functioning at less than 15% of their normal capacity, and renal replacement therapy is required to sustain life. This can involve either hemodialysis, where blood is filtered through a machine, or peritoneal dialysis, where a cleansing solution is introduced into the abdomen to remove waste products. Kidney transplantation is also an option where a healthy kidney from a donor is surgically placed into the recipient's body to replace the failed kidneys. Managing kidney failure involves a combination of medical, treatments, lifestyle modifications, and close monitoring to control symptoms, prevent complications, and improve the patient's quality of life. Causes of Kidney Disease There are various causes of kidney disease and they can be broadly categorized into two main types. Acute kidney injury, aka and chronic kidney disease, CKD. One acute kidney injury, AKI. AKI is a sudden and often reversible loss of kidney function that occurs over a short period. Common causes of AKI include A, dehydration, inadequate fluid intake, or excessive fluid loss can lead to reduced blood flow to the kidneys, impairing their function. B. Reduced blood flow to the kidneys. Conditions like shock, severe infections, heart failure, or severe burns can cause low blood pressure, reducing kidney perfusion. C. Kidney obstruction. Blockage in the urinary tract, such as kidney stones or tumors can prevent the normal flow of urine, leading to AKI. D. Medications and toxins. Certain medications, contrast dyes used in imaging procedures, and exposure to certain toxins can damage the kidneys. E. Severe infections. Infections like sepsis can cause widespread inflammation and damage to the kidneys. F. Autoimmune diseases. Conditions like vasculitis or lupus can cause inflammation and damage to kidney tissues. 2. Chronic Kidney Disease CKD CKD is a long-term and progressive condition in which the kidneys gradually lose their function over time. Common causes of CKD include A. Diabetes Diabetes is one of the leading causes of CKD. High blood sugar levels over time can damage the small blood vessels in the kidneys, leading to kidney damage. B. High blood pressure hypertension. Uncontrolled high blood pressure can strain the blood vessels in the kidneys, causing damage. C. Glomerulonephritis. Inflammation of the glomeruli, which are the tiny filtering units in the kidneys, can impair kidney function. D. Polycystic Kidney Disease PKD A genetic disorder where fluid-filled cysts form in the kidneys, gradually affecting their function. E. Autoimmune diseases Certain autoimmune conditions, such as IgA nephropathy or lupus nephritis, can lead to kidney damage. F. Congenital and hereditary conditions Some kidney diseases are present at birth, or caused by genetic mutations that affect kidney function. It's essential to diagnose kidney disease early 
and manage it appropriately to prevent further damage and complications. Maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Managing underlying conditions like diabetes and hypertension. And avoiding nephrotoxic substances can help reduce the risk of kidney disease or slow its progression. If you suspect you have kidney disease or have concerns about your kidney health, it's essential to consult a healthcare professional for proper evaluation and guidance. In the midst of our busy lives, without us knowing it, there are several things food, drink, and bad living habits that can trigger kidney disease. Here are some common habits that may contribute to the development or worsening of kidney disease, along with their explanations. 1. Excessive salt intake. Consuming too much salt sodium can increase blood pressure and lead to water retention. High blood pressure puts strain on the kidneys and can damage the blood vessels, reducing their ability to filter waste effectively. 2. Dehydration Not drinking enough water can lead to dehydration, which puts extra stress on the kidneys. When you're dehydrated, your kidneys have to work harder to filter out waste and maintain the body's fluid balance, potentially leading to kidney damage over time. 3. High-Protein Diets Diets that are excessively high in protein, especially animal protein, can increase the workload on the kidneys. The breakdown products of protein metabolism produce waste products that the kidneys must filter out. Over time, this can cause strain on the kidneys and contribute to kidney disease. 4. Sugar and Sweetened Beverage Consumption Diets high in sugar and sugary beverages can contribute to obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. These conditions increase the risk of kidney disease, as they put additional stress on the kidneys and can damage blood vessels. 5. Smoking Smoking damages blood vessels and decreases blood flow to the kidneys. This reduced blood flow can impair the kidney's ability to function correctly and may lead to kidney disease. 6. Excessive alcohol consumption Heavy alcohol consumption can lead to high blood pressure and liver disease. Both of these conditions can contribute to kidney damage as the kidneys rely on a healthy circulatory system to function properly. 7. Overuse of over-the-counter painkillers Frequent or prolonged use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. NSAIDs such as ibuprofen and aspirin can harm the kidneys. These medications can constrict blood vessels and decrease blood flow to the kidneys, potentially causing kidney damage. 8. Lack of physical activity Leading a sedentary lifestyle can contribute to obesity, diabetes, and high blood pressure, all of which increase the risk of kidney disease. 9. Uncontrolled diabetes and high blood pressure Both diabetes and high blood pressure are major risk factors for kidney disease. 1. Blood sugar levels and blood pressure are not properly controlled, they can cause damage to the kidneys over time. 10. Chronic stress Chronic stress can lead to unhealthy coping mechanisms, such as excessive alcohol or tobacco use, poor dietary choices, and lack of exercise. These factors, combined with the physiological effects of stress, can increase the risk of kidney disease. It's essential to adopt a balanced and healthy lifestyle, including a well-rounded diet, regular physical activity, limited alcohol consumption, and avoiding smoking to support kidney health and reduce the risk of kidney disease. If you have concerns about your kidney health, it's essential to consult with a healthcare professional for personalized advice and recommendations. Kidney Disease Management if you suspect or have been diagnosed with kidney disease, it is essential to take certain steps to manage the condition properly. Kidney disease 
refers to damage or reduced function of the kidneys, which are vital organs responsible for filtering waste products and excess fluids from the blood, maintaining electrolyte balance and producing hormones that regulate blood pressure and red blood cell production. Here are the steps you should take if you have kidney disease. 1. Consult a healthcare professional. The first and most crucial step is to consult a healthcare provider, preferably a nephrologist, a doctor who specializes in kidney disorders. They will evaluate your medical history, perform a physical examination, and conduct relevant tests, such as blood and urine tests to determine the extent of kidney damage and identify the underlying cause. 2. Understand your condition. Learn about your specific kidney disease, its stage, and its implications. There are different types and stages of kidney disease, and understanding your condition will help you make informed decisions about your treatment and lifestyle adjustments. 3. Follow your doctor's advice. Once you have a clear understanding of your kidney disease, follow your doctor's recommendations treatment plan diligently. Treatment may include medications to control blood pressure, manage diabetes if present, reduce proteinuria excess protein in the urine, and address other underlying conditions contrib to kidney damage. 4. Monitor blood pressure and blood sugar. High blood pressure and diabetes are significant risk factors for kidney disease. If you have these conditions, it is crucial to keep them under control through lifestyle modifications and medications as prescribed by your doctor. 5. Manage your diet. A kidney-friendly diet is crucial in managing kidney disease. This may include reducing salt intake, limiting protein consumption, controlling phosphorus and potassium levels, and staying adequately hydrated. Your healthcare provider or a registered dietitian can help design a personalized diet plan. 6. Stay hydrated. Proper hydration is essential for kidney function. However, excessive fluid intake may be harmful if your kidneys are not functioning well. Your doctor can guide you on the appropriate amount of fluids to consume based on your specific condition. 7. Avoid nephrotoxic substances. Certain medications, over-the-counter drugs, and substances like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs NSAIDs, and some herbal supplements can be harmful to the kidneys. Always check with your doctor before taking any new medication or supplement. 8. Exercise regularly. Regular physical activity can benefit kidney health and overall well-being. Consult with your doctor to determine a safe exercise routine suitable for your condition. 9. Quit smoking and limit alcohol. Smoking and excessive alcohol consumption can exacerbate kidney damage. Quitting smoking and moderating alcohol intake can help improve kidney health. 10. Manage stress. Chronic stress can negatively impact your health, including your kidneys. Engage in relaxation techniques, hobbies, or activities that help reduce stress. Remember, kidney disease is a serious condition and managing it requires a comprehensive approach involving medical care, lifestyle adjustments, and regular monitoring. Always work closely with your healthcare provider to ensure you are taking the necessary steps to protect and improve your kidney health. Medical action needed if we are diagnosed said with kidney failure. Kidney failure, also known as end-stage renal disease ESRD, occurs when the kidneys are severely damaged and are no longer able to filter waste and excess fluids from the blood effectively. This can lead to a buildup of toxins and electrolyte imbalances in the body, which can be life-threatening if not addressed promptly. 
If you are diagnosed with kidney failure, here are some common medical actions that might be taken. 1. Dialysis Dialysis is a treatment that helps filter waste, salt, and extra water from the blood when the kidneys can no longer perform this function adequately. There are two main types of dialysis. A hemodialysis. In hemodialysis, blood is pumped out of the body and filtered through a dialysis machine known as a hemodializer. The machine removes waste products, excess fluids, and electrolytes from the blood, and then the clean blood is returned to the body. Hemodialysis is typically performed at a dialysis center several times per week, with each session lasting a few hours. There are different types of hemodialysis, each with its own characteristics and benefits. The two primary types of hemodialysis are conventional, hemodialysis and home hemodialysis. A 1. Conventional hemodialysis in center hemodialysis. Conventional hemodialysis is typically conducted in a dialysis center or hospital by trained healthcare professionals. Patients usually undergo treatment three times a week, with each session lasting around three to five hours. Here's how it works. A. Vascular access. To perform hemodialysis, a vascular access point is necessary to access the bloodstream. The most common types of vascular access include A. 1. Arteriovenous fistula AVF A surgical connection between an artery and a vein, usually in the arm, creating a high-flow access point. A. 2. Arteriovenous graft AVG A synthetic tube implanted under the skin to connect an artery and a vein if a fistula cannot be created. A3. Central Venous Catheter CVC A temporary access tube placed into a large vein, typically in the neck, chest, or groin, used when an AVF or AVG is not available. B. Hemodialysis Procedure During the hemodialysis session, the patient's blood is pumped through the hemodialysis machine, which contains a semi-permeable membrane called a dialyzer. The dialyzer acts as an artificial kidney, allowing the exchange of waste products and excess fluids from the blood into a dialysate solution. C. Dialysate Solution The dialysate is a carefully balanced solution that helps remove waste and excess fluids from the blood. It contains electrolytes in specific concentrations to help maintain the body's balance during treatment. D. Monitoring During the treatment, vital signs and other parameters are closely monitored to ensure the patient's safety and the effectiveness of the procedure. A. 2. Home Hemodialysis Home hemodialysis allows patients to undergo hemodialysis in the comfort of their own homes with the assistance of a trained caregiver or a self-sufficient patient. There are two main types of home hemodialysis. A. Conventional home hemodialysis. This type of home hemodialysis is similar to conventional in-center hemodialysis in terms of the equipment and procedure. The key difference is the location, as it is performed at home. B. Daily home hemodialysis. Daily home hemodialysis involves more frequent and shorter sessions compared to conventional hemodialysis. Patients typically perform dialysis five to seven times a week, with each session lasting two to three hours. This more frequent schedule allows for better waste and fluid removal, potentially improving patient outcomes and quality of life. Benefits of home hemodialysis 1. Greater flexibility and convenience allowing patients to fit treatment into their daily routines. 2. More frequent dialysis sessions may lead to better health outcomes and improved quality of life. 3. Reduced exposure to infections 
that can be common in dialysis centers or hospitals. It's important to note that the choice between conventional and home hemodialysis depends on factors such as patient's health condition, lifestyle, availability of a suitable caregiver, and the training required for home hemodialysis. Patients considering home hemodialysis should receive proper training and support to ensure the safe and effective management of the procedure at home. Always consult with a healthcare professional to determine the most appropriate type of hemodialysis for individual needs and circumstances. Based on the vascular access method used, hemodialysis is divided into two, hemodialysis via a double lumen catheter and an AV arterial venous shunt AV shunt. Both are used to gain access to the bloodstream, allowing blood to be drawn from the body, filtered through the dialysis machine, and returned back to the patient. Let's explore each method in detail. 1. Hemodialysis via double lumen catheter. A double lumen catheter is a type of vascular access that involves the insertion of a catheter with two separate channels into a large vein typically in the neck, chest, or groin. One lumen is used to draw blood from the patient's body, and the other lumen is used to return the filtered blood back to the patient. Here's how it works. Insertion. The double lumen catheter is inserted into a large vein by a trained healthcare professional, typically in an operating room or catheterization lab. The procedure is relatively quick and can be done under local anesthesia. Vascular access. Once the catheter is in place, one lumen is positioned in the superior vena cava, a large vein that leads directly to the heart. This lumen serves as the arterial line and is responsible for drawing blood from the patient's body into the dialysis machine. Hemodialysis procedure. During the hemodialysis session, Blood is withdrawn from the patient through the arterial line, pumped into the dialysis machine, and passed through the dialyzer artificial kidney. In the dialyzer, waste products and excess fluids are removed from the blood, and the cleaned blood is then returned to the patient's bloodstream through the venous linea off the double lumen catheter. Monitoring. While undergoing hemodialysis with a double lumen catheter, Patients are closely monitored for any signs of complications, such as infections or clotting around the catheter insertion site. 2. Hemodialysis via AV shunt arterial venous shunt. An AV shunt, also known as an arterial venous fistula AVF or arterial venous graft AVG, is a more permanent type of vascular access that requires surgery to create a direct connection between an artery and a vein. This connection allows for a high flow access point, making it more efficient for hemodialysis. Here's how it works. AV fistula AVF. In an AVF, an artery and a vein are surgically connected directly. This connection causes increased blood flow into the vein leading to dilation and thickening of the vein walls. After the AVF matures, it becomes an ideal site for repeated needle insertions for hemodialysis. AV graft AVG. In cases where the patient's blood vessels are not suitable for an AVF, an AVG may be used instead. An AVG involves surgically connecting an artery and a vein using a synthetic tube graft made of a biocompatible material. The graft creates a bridge between the artery and vein, providing a suitable access point for hemodialysis. Vascular access. Once the AV shunt is created and matured, a healthcare professional can access the bloodstream by inserting two needles, one to draw blood, and the other to return filtered blood into the AVF or AVG. Hemodialysis Procedure The hemodialysis procedure is similar to that of a double lumen catheter, 
Blood is drawn from the patient's AV shunt, sent through the dialysis machine for purification, and then returned to the patient through the same access point. Monitoring. Patients with an AV shunt are also monitored closely. For any signs of complications, such as infections, clotting, or issues with the EVF or AVT. In summary, hemodialysis via double lumen catheter. And AV shunt are two different methods of vascular access US to perform hemodialysis. The choice between the two depends on the patient's health condition, vascular anatomy, and the suitability of each access type for the individual patient. Your healthcare team will determine the best approach to ensure safe and effective hemodialysis treatment. If diagnosed with kidney failure, it is crucial to make significant changes to your diet, drink choices, and lifestyle. The goal is to reduce the workload on the kidneys and manage potential complications. Here are some foods, drinks, and lifestyle factors that should be avoided along with explanations. 1. Sodium-rich foods High sodium foods can lead to fluid retention and increased blood pressure, putting extra strain on the kidneys. Avoid processed and canned foods, fast foods, salty snacks, and certain condiments like soy sauce. 2. High potassium foods Damaged kidneys may struggle to remove excess potassium from the bloodstream, leading to a condition called hyperkalemia. Avoid high potassium foods like bananas, oranges, potatoes, tomatoes, spinach, and beans. 3. Phosphorus-rich foods Kidneys help regulate phosphorus levels and in kidney failure. Phosphorus can accumulate, causing bone and heart problems. Limit or avoid foods like dairy products, nuts, seeds, and certain carbonated beverages. 4. Excessive protein intake Consuming too much protein can increase the workload on the kidneys. It's essential to limit red meat, poultry, fish, and dairy products. However, moderate amounts of high-quality protein may still be included under the get and see off a healthcare professional or registered dietitian. 5. Sugary foods and drinks High sugar intake can contribute to weight gain and complications like diabetes and hypertension, which can further impact kidney function. Avoid sugary beverages, sweets, and processed foods with added sugars. 6. Alcohol Alcohol can dehydrate the body and put strain on the kidneys. Moreover, alcohol interacts with medications that you may be taking for kidney failure or other related conditions. It's best to avoid alcohol entirely or consume it very sparingly with your doctor's approval. 7. Caffeine Caffeine can raise blood pressure and may lead to dehydration. Limit coffee, tea, and energy drinks as they can add to the workload of your kidneys. 8. Smoking Smoking can damage blood vessels and worsen kidney function. It's essential to quit smoking to improve overall health and reduce the risk of complications. 9. Dehydration Inadequate fluid intake can lead to dehydration, which can strain the kidneys further. However, the amount of fluid you can consume will depend on your individual condition, so consult your healthcare provider for specific guidelines. 10. Over-the-counter medications and supplements Some over-the-counter medications and supplements can be harmful to the kidneys, especially pain relievers, like ibuprofen and certain herbal supplements. Always check with your healthcare provider before taking any new medications or supplements. It's essential to work closely with a healthcare professional such as a nephrologist or registered dietitian to create a personalized diet and lifestyle plan 
that suits your specific needs and medical condition. They can help you manage your kidney failure effectively and improve your overall quality of life. That's all for today's video on understanding kidney health. Remember, our kidneys are incredible organs that perform vital functions, so let's take care of them. Important conclusion for today. Maintain a healthy diet, drink, and lifestyle so that our kidneys stay healthy and function perfectly. And control your blood pressure and blood sugar well. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. Take care and stay healthy. Bye for now.